good thing. <laughs> wow, interrupt me while I'm talking. Wow, wow. Sorry. Wow. I'm leaving this in. I'm leaving this in. No, you won't. Challenge accepted, okay? Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown and Michael Nichols Pate. Our entertainment correspondent is coming back after almost a month and a half of not seeing each other besides our movie reviews. And we're going to be talking about the big news in the entertainment industry. That is the Emmy nominations that were released earlier this week. And we wanted to break them down, not in depth because we only have a short period of time. And we're going to try and actually keep this to a 45 minute episode today. So we don't drag on some of these great shows because we'll probably talk about them actually when the Emmys are announced or actually the winners are announced in September. But Michael Nichols Pate, welcome back to the show. How are you? I'm thriving and surviving. <laughs> wow. Wow. I don't know. Um, I was under the false impression we'd be talking about Beyonce's new renaissance. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> Is this like a perfect? Beyonce is releasing a new album and dropped merch and did this whole merchandise package. There's four different packages. You don't know what the merchandise looks like. You're getting an album. You don't know nothing, but you paid $150 for it. For a mystery box. It is not financially responsible to support Beyonce anymore. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna be as nice as possible. (laughs) This is a no Beyonce zone for a certain reason, (laughs) okay? We do not talk about Beyonce like Disney doesn't talk about Bruno. I was just about to make that joke. You stole it from my brain. You're welcome. At least someone's brain is working properly this morning. Um, and the, uh, that's a joke on me, everyone. Don't send me negative. I was gonna no, I was gonna say, are we sure about that? <laughs> uh so Michael, uh you have been at Swamp this week. We are recording this Thursday morning, so I put out on social media that this episode is gonna be coming out a little bit later than normal. But how did you find the 2022 Emmy nominations? Uh, that were released on Tuesday by two people who I had no idea who they are. Um, real talk, am I just not watching TV shows that are getting nominated anymore? Because I didn't know like 90% of these, or I've not seen like 90% of these. I'm like, I watch a lot of shit on TV. Why do I not know any of the things like really nominated? There's probably like a smattering in each category that I'm like, okay, I know that one, but I'm like, fuck i guess fuck my drag well it's not like four years ago or not even four years ago but five ten years ago when you you thought you knew the nominations right here there's so many streaming services and so many tv channels that i don't have enough time to watch all this shit and i'm sorry some of this stuff that was nominated was shit this year and i'm still surprised that they got nominated i think it's more the fact that Whoever has the best PR game, uh, PR game during these nomination periods gets the nominee nominations, right? So, and most of these, even just looking at the drama, top drama and top comedy, and uh, the limited series, ninety percent of them are streaming. Yep. What we do in the shadows and Better Call Saul are the only ones on prime time, which means every other one of these you have to have paid for a specialty channel or paid for a streaming channel to and watch them abbott elementary oh it is on abc i watch it on hulu so that's the only reason i love abbott elementary okay. which when we get to comedy series i'll talk about that but yeah um i agree this is a this is the year of the streaming and i think the a pandemic has changed the way that videos are released yeah. and here here's what we have now and I, the one I'm really shocked about is the Outstanding Variety Sketch Series, where there was only two nominees, Saturday Night Live and a Black Lady Sketch Show. Black Lady Sketch Show. I know, but it seems very weird that you would only have two nominees. It's like a, it's like the best male actor in at the Tonys last year when they only had one nominee and surprise, surprise, who won? I don't. I don't think there's a lot of variety shows that exist right now in the U S and that, and this is very U S centric. 
That's so because the I, mean, British TV has been fucking rocking the game and it's definitely never registered here. I want the British TV. Like the Emmys should start looking at some of these British shows besides just Ricky Gervais's The Office. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, I want to talk about some of these and we'll dive into uh, the categories sure. and I'll try to uh, do this as quickly as possible. We'll start with drama. Uh, outstanding drama series. Uh, the, the nominees are Better Call Saul, Euphoria, Ozarks, uh, Severance, Squid Games, which I still don't understand why that was nominated, but anyway. Uh, Stranger Things, Season 4, Succession, and Yellow Jackets. Um, any shockers there? Any surprises in your opinions? Any uh, top picks for you? Nothing. Su- well, I guess Stranger Things is a little surprising. Have they been nominated before? They would nominate way back in season one, I think. Yeah, I feel like they don't normally get nominated. I'm very thrilled to see Yellow Jackets because I didn't think they were going to get nominated. And I really enjoyed that. And I'm really excited to see where that goes since they've planned out five seasons. I agree. Uh, I'm Like I said, I'm still shocked that Squid Games was nominated. I do not think it was that good of a series. I do Disagree. Not- <laughs> understandable <laughs> for those who are watching i don't know if you saw the clap or for those who are listening that was the clap back moment um, i did the maddie clap there you go i don't know what that means but sure yeah you do you watched euphoria oh uh, yeah sure when she she always does this yeah let's not even talk about euphoria okay because i think you and i will disagree completely on that why that was nominated and i don't think oh, she was that good um <gasps> My, if I was a betting man, because this is what we always do, I would say Succession is the probably the top that's probably going to win because it is on that uh, streak right now. But saying that, usually after three or four nominations or three or four wins, they usually give it to somebody else and they give it start giving it to somebody else. So uh, Succession is probably the top one here. The, the outlier for me is Severance. I think this is going to be one that's going to be watched because a lot of actors were nominated for this. And I think we're going to see a potential pick up a few awards for severance. I think, like you said, Succession is the probably odds on favorite, but it's also Ozark's last season. Um, Yellow Jackets had a really strong open and they do like to give shows that have a really strong open uh, the award. Yeah. But also I don't think we can count out Squid Game. I know you don't like it, but it really, it really absolutely, knew. <laughs> it really swept like, it really swept the um, the Golden states Globes. by storm, and did it do the Golden Globes? I barely pay attention to that, <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, I've only seen maybe half of these that were nominated. Um. I have not, yeah, Better Call Saul. I know there's a lot of issues with uh, the main actor having a heart attack during this season. So that's going to be interesting to see if he's going to win that. Uh, it's also on Flash Legs. Uh, Ozark, like you said, Severance has picked up. Stranger Things being its second last season, it's probably not going to win. It's good. No. Succession, it might be the odds on favorite, but like you said, Yellow Jacket is the one that I'm probably watching a little bit closer along with Severance to say, okay, if there's ever yeah. going to be a squeaker to take it, these are going to be them. Um, going back, to, going down to the lead actor and lead actress, because I just want to make sure that we just jump into those. Sure. Do supporting. Uh, lead actor for a drama series, Jason Bateman for Ozark, Brian Cox for Succession, usually odds on favorite to win. Li Jun Zhang uh, for Squid Games, Bob Odenkirk for Better Call Saul, Adam Scott for uh, Severance, and Jeremy Strong for Succession. Odds on favorite here? I've only seen Squid Game. <laughs> So I don't know the other oh, one. Game. <laughs> um, I think I think I'd be really happy if he won um, compared to the rest of them. But I mean, like you said, Brian Cox has probably got it in the bag. But or Jeremy uh, Strong, one or the other. It's usually going to be a succession candidate whenever, or yeah. A, a yeah, succession candidate. The one or I they watched, split the vote. Exactly, and someone else. And I think for this, it's going to be Adam Scott in Severance. If you have not seen this show, I highly recommend it. If you have Apple TV Plus, it is uh, Adam Scott and 
uh, Patricia Arquette, two great actors, and it's a really good show. And I would highly recommend it to anyone who is looking for something to make them feel better about how their job is run. <laughs> With that, we're going to head over to lead actress in a drama series. Jody Comer for Killing Eve, Laura Linney for Ozark, Melanie Linsky for Yellow Jacket, Sandra Oh for Killing Eve, Reese Witherspoon for The Morning Show, and Zendaya for Euphoria. Now, I know you have seen more than one of these shows. Uh, I sure have. Any I've Denzel seen Ozark? two. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Yellow Jackets and Euphoria, I morning show I do like to watch. And I, I haven't gotten to see this current season because life has just been busy. And um, any, any odds on favorite for this one? I mean, Zendaya's already won it once. I felt she did a better job this season than last season, but I will not be surprised if um, Melanie Linsky or Laura Linney gets it. I don't think Laura Linney is going to get it. I just, I, the, the Emmys like to nominate Ozark, but don't like to give Ozark any acting awards, only directing awards for Jason Bateman for some strange reason. So I am not putting my money on Laura Linney on this one. It could. I just, I don't see it. Sandra O oh also won the Emmy for this role. So there's a couple of like repeat winners in this category that it could easily shift to, but I, I would be, I would not be surprised if Zendaya and Sandra split it and we see like Melanie Linsky get it. Um, I watched Morning Show, this new season of The Morning Show with Reese Witherspoon. I will say it's probably her best performance of the series so far. So okay. uh, uh, spoiler alert for those who have not seen it. Um, the Bradley Jack with a student character uh, plays. Uh, she is struggling with her sexual identity during this whole season and coming out as a professional uh, person who is in the media. So she does do a lot of uh, dramatic acting in this series. So I would highly love that. Love it. Love it. Like a, and her and Julianne Margulies are lesbian lovers. <laughs> I love Julia Margulies. Um, I am shocked. I'm going to say this because I think I it was an over... It did not get its uh, dues. Mandy Moore in This Is Us should have been nominated in this category for her role as the mother who is played who has dementia, who is struggling with uh, brain cancer. I think she should have been nominated for this. And that is not just saying that because of everything that's going on in my life. But she did a fantastic role and the Emmys fucked this one up you did not need to nominate two people for killing eve in this category you should have nominated mandy more um i'm gonna be honest i cannot watch this as us because it's just non-stop like it's a it's too soap opera for me and it's like aggressive like every episode they're crying i can't i emotionally cannot deal with that <laughs> We're gay. We can't deal with anything, okay? I watched one, <laughs> one episode. I think it was like the first pandemic episode or whatever, the right during, like, and it was like an hour and a half long and everyone was crying and everyone was dramatic. And I'm like, is this every episode? I can't do this. Yes, you can. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. No, I'm like, this is a lot of emotion for... Tuesday at like nine o'clock at night. And heading over to the comedy series now because we have 45 minutes and I'm gonna keep us on schedule, Mike. Yes. <laughs> uh, outstanding comedy series, Abbott Elementary, Barry, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Hacks, The Marvelous Miss Maisel, Only Murders in the Building, Ted Lasso, and What We Do in the Shadows. So congratulations, Ted Lasso, for winning this award. I, I congratulate you and I bring you uh, your third uh, Emmy for Best Outstanding Comedy. Do not count Abbott Elementary out. Elementary. Elementary? Elementary. Elementary? Okay. Anyway, I said it wrong. Abbott right. Elementary. Isn't that how you say that word? Elementary. 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 Okay, we're not doing this. <laughs> this is why we um, get, this is why we have three-hour episodes, Michael, because yeah. we go on these words. Um, anyway. 
Uh, you think Abbott could potentially L Abbott insert last name, whatever the hell it's called here, is gonna win? Um I think it has a really good shot. It's gotten great reviews, it's gotten great body, it's like universally beloved across the board. It's funny, it's clever, it's well done, and it also made history. Um, the creator, uh, she is the first black woman to be nominated for three uh emmy awards ever and so i think that's a huge thing and like yeah ted lasso is probably the odds on favorite because it usually sweeps but i really don't want us to count abbott elementary out because i think it's just it could easily get it it was very very good i'm putting my odds on favorite for only murders in the building I know you are not a fan of Steve Martin and Martin Short and Selena. No, I love them. I I've never I haven't seen it. I want to watch it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Highly recommend. Season two is freaking fantastic. We are five episodes in, and I am drawn like hook, line, and sinker. I'm a gay man at Pride in my prime. I'm loving every minute of it, and I'm hoping for some more at the end of the day. But I will say this. It is the sort of the, the unknown in this series. A lot of people know what we do in the shadows. A lot of people know uh, Ted Lasso. A lot of people know The Marvelous Miss Maisel because it's a perennial uh, candidate to get nominated in this category if, it's, uh, if it has episodes out. Hacks is kind of the new horse. A lot of people are watching Kirby Enthusiasm because everyone loves uh, Larry David. Barry because everyone loves the Fonz. They're, they're well known. This only murders in the building and Hulu and Disney Plus here in Canada. It's kind of the, to me, the dark horse where not a lot of people know about it. So I'm a know. little surprised. I love this show. I really love this show. I'm a little surprised Mrs. Maisel got nominated because it was not a strong season. And it ended in like a weird place that felt like it needed one more episode for the season and it just didn't have one. I just felt it wasn't strong. And I love the show. I think the show is fantastic. I just wouldn't have nominated this season and would have probably put Love Victor's final season in here. I liked it. I thought it was better. Or, you know, even like a Marvel series could have gone in. I just feel like Mrs. Maisel just wasn't as strong for me. Yeah, I haven't watched the full season, so I can't say yes or no to that, but I trust Michael's judgment on the amazing, the amazing Mar Ms. Mar Marvelous Miss Maisel. So if it probably shouldn't have been, maybe it shouldn't have been, but there's my... I also don't get the appeal of what we do in the shadows. That's not my vibe. That's not my shtick. I it don't was understand why it gets like nominated. one, right? Like, it was... I massive. don't know. Like, it's never been my vibe. And, like, it gets nominated every year since it's been out. And I'm like, I don't get it. I don't. <laughs> okay, we're going to head over to the lead actress in a comedy series now. And that is... Rachel Brosnahan, 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 the Brosnahan, Quinta Brunson, an Abbott Elementary, Kaylee Coco, the flight attendant, Ella Fanning, the great, Issa Rae, Insecure, Jean Smart, Hacks. Um, I know you're a fan of the flight attendant. I know you're a fan of Quinta, of the Abbott Elementary. Uh, you're a fan of the marvelous Miss Maisel. Have you seen the great? I haven't, but I, it's on my list. Yeah. I, I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Let's put it this way. There's shows that, you know, were made and you think, why the fuck did you make this show? Great. <laughs> the Great. The Great is one of these shows that you watch and go, huh, that was a choice. That was a TV show. That's six hours of my life I want back. <laughs> um, Kaylee Cuoco needs to win this. This not season to. was brilliant. I know she's not going to. I'm mad that she's not going to, but she needs to win it. Dean Smart um, is going to win this. Probably. Because it's a freaking great show. Again, don't count Kita out. I could. You, you never know because they usually like there's always that one oddball uh, Emmy nomination that you they or Emmy award winning uh, the, the award that goes out that goes, oh, 
that wasn't that was one that I didn't expect. So I could you could potentially see him uh, winning this. So who knows? I don't know. Yeah, she's great, Quinta. I I think that, and it's it's just it's such a great show. I I but I Kaylee Cuoco is probably gave the best performance out of the ones I saw. Um, but well, you know, she, Jean she Smart's been winning everything. She has, and the Emmys like to stick with the tried and true instead of the not tried and true. Because Kaylee never won anything for Big Bang, right? Nope. No. And, a- and great, I'm going to be, I'm going to say something controversial. Good. She, she should not. Her. She did not deserve to win anything for Big Bang Theory. I didn't think she could act until I started watching The Flight Attendant. Well, she can't get married. Well, she can get married. She just can't hold the marriage down. That's fine. I don't care so much about her personal life. I care about the, girl, the stuff girl, she's, I care about the stuff she's putting girl, on the television. You are literally the entertainment pundit who talks about personal lives all the time. Anyway. I don't care. <laughs> we're heading over to the outstanding lead actor in a comedy series. And the nominees are Donald Glover for Atlanta, which I did not even think was still on the TV. So that shows you how much I know. Bill Hader for Barry, Nicholas Holt for The Great, Steve Martin for Only Murders in the Building, Martin Short for Only Murders in the Mild- Mur- uh, Building, and the winner of this season, uh, this uh, award, is Mr. Jason Sudeikis for Ted Lasso. Congratulations, Ted, for the another award-winning performance as Ted Lasso. I have not watched any of these shows. I would put money on Jason Sudeikis for Ted Lasso, though, because he's pretty much, I think he's won it two years in a row now. He's won it every time. It's only been one season. It's been two. This is the second nomination. Okay, so he's probably going to win it. I would be very shocked if he didn't. Um, I also think only murders in the building is going to split the vote if they even. But no, continue. I was going to say, I was going to say something. Do you agree? I think you're right. I think you are completely right. I think this is why Jason Sudeikis wins it most of the time. Because last year, Steve Harvey, Steve Harvey, Steve Martin and Martin Short were both nominated for this award as well against Jason Sudeikis and Sudeikis won. Um, Martin gives a fantastic performance. Uh, Which Martin? Steve Martin. Steve Martin gives a fantastic performance. Um, it is probably the highlight of his career, in my opinion. I know people would say, well, the jerk is great. Roxanne's great. Understandable. This to me is like the quintessential Steve Martin role because he plays himself as a actor who was well known in the 80s and the 70s and now is just sort of in this unknown era. And that's kind of what he is now is because he's not doing acting roles. He's doing his music career and he it, it's an awesome show. Highly recommend it to anyone. If you have not seen it, stop listening to us right now after the episode's done and then go watch it because I highly recommend it. It is one of the greatest shows that I have seen in a very long time. Stop listening to us now after the episode. (laughs) Yes. Okay. I said I don't always have to make sense on this show. I just need to make sure that. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, Any any, uh, snubs that you think? I do think the flight attendant could have been in the category. Um, what main character best. is the guy? Oh, uh, I for, oh, for for act for now that I'm like thinking back, I'm like, wait, that's also a snub that the flight attendant could have been over marvelous Mrs. Maisel for best comedy um, actor in a comedy series, or even actress yeah. in a comedy series. Yeah, any. I think. Go ahead. Ooh, I'm sorry. Ed Air is that. not a good place to say. No, I know. <laughs> Especially after I said, stop listening to us afterwards. I'm talking. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of the comedies, I didn't watch a lot of comedies this year. I, I we did a did, you did, did a lot of reality shows this year, right? Like you did The Masked Singer and all that. Not not I'm all. problematic. I watched Jersey Shore. <laughs> I am problematic. Okay. Okay. Can we talk for a okay, second? Okay, that's the show. No, no. <laughs> Can we talk for a second about why the hell this has nothing to do with the Emmys? I've seen five commercials via YouTube for the last in the last like three or four days for this show upcoming show on Wow World 
World Presents Plus. Why is Miss Vanji getting her own goddamn reality love story show here? Um, All Star Shore? Or are you talking about All Star Shore? No, she actually has her own show. Vanji has her own show coming out, 24 Hours of Love, where she has eight guys vying for her love. And it is the weirdest thing I have ever seen. And we are breaking this news to Michael as we are talking about this. Are you sure? Oh, my. <laughs> I need it. I need it. I'm hook, hook, line, and sinker. Vanjie also is on the All-Star Shore, which is the Jersey Shore reality competition that's going on right now, which includes a whole bunch of other, like, international, like, Geordie Shore and Acapulco Shore and all these other places. And Angelina from the Jersey Shore is on it. It's, like, a whole journey. And I don't know why Vanjie's there, but, hey, why not? Well, I just don't understand why Vanjie has her own show now. Like 24 we hours. We love Vanjie. No, we don't. We do. You don't. We do. America. America. Miss Vanjie is on this season of Candace Drag Race as well. Yeah. And because... so is Jimbo. Yeah. That starts tonight on the 14th. Oh, yeah. For those who are, have, who are still watching all these amazing drag race performances that are just getting pumped out left, right, center, that gives content to people to review said episodes of these, these amazing episodes of RuPaul's Drag Race and Drag Race All-Stars and Drag Race UK and Drag Race France and Drag Race Canada because you know, all we need in this world is more review shows. Anyway, on that note, uh, I continue on. Hi, Michael. How are you? You better uh, stop. I am. I'm stopping right now. I'm stop right now. Thank you very much. I need somebody with a human touch. <laughs> hey, you. Always on a run. I gotta slow it Thank down. Thank you, Spice right. Girls. Um, which Spice Girls would you be? Which Spice Girls would I be? I'd be sporty with a little cross-up baby. What about yourself? I'd be scary, Spice. <laughs> Girl, you would be ginger, okay? You would oh, leave the posh. group. You would leave the group. Just be like, oh, I'm going to go by myself. And then when you're like, oh, shit, it didn't work. Hey, everyone, can we come back and do the Spice Girls? No, no I'd be posh. Marry a, mar marry a semi, not really good looking man, just for the money? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yet again, this is why everything is an hour long on this. Yeah, I know. We're problematic. Um, the, I fine. will talk about this. I will. I, where is it? Uh, outstanding competition programming. So I want to talk about the the other uh, nominees for the shows, and then we'll do the outstanding actors and actresses in the supporting roles. Never, because no one ever cares about them. We're not going to be limited. The, I'm good. <sighs> Uh, let's do limited. I'm problematic. Then. I'm problematic. Leave me alone. Okay. We can do yeah. Let's do competition no, first. No, we're doing limited series, limited or anthology series because Michael runs the shows now because his name is first, I guess. Welcome to the cross border interviews with Michael Nichols Pape and I'm guest host. Fight you. <laughs> we're going to fight. Outstanding limited or anthology series Dope Stick, Hulu, The Dropout, Hulu, Inventing Anna, Netflix, Pam and Tommy, Hulu. The White Lotus, HBO, HBO Max. I don't know why I had to tell the streaming services that they're on, but I felt like I should. So anyway, Mr. Host, which one do you see is the best here? <laughs> throw something at you, because I ought to watch the money. It's in the bank. Inventing Anna. I like that little bitch. I like that show. I want her to win. It's probably going to be White Lotus. I've never but... heard of White Lotus. Oh, it's the one with Jennifer Coolidge. Oh, yeah, she's going to win. <laughs> I'm we love Jennifer. Yeah. Yeah. The drop of Makes the me want a hot dog real bad. Um, I would not put my, I would not uh, count out Dope Sick, though. With yeah, Michael. that also got nominated for everything. Yeah, with Michael Keaton. So I'm, I would watch that one. But the, the dark horse in this one is Pam and Tommy. After Pamela Anderson came out and said she does not agree with anything this movie said or this series said. Because 
every the queen said that about the crown and it still fucking won everything well the queen's <laughs> british <laughs> pamela's american uh excuse me isn't she or is she canadian she's canadian girl do not come for my oh. canadian girls just because you're american thing, no i she is american you, she has she's american. north american <laughs> do we really want to again <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm in rare form this morning. <laughs> yeah, we are recording this like literally half hour before the episode is supposed to drop. So this is why it's coming out later. And we just, we're just having fun with this episode because we haven't talked to each other live via the internet in a long time. So this is, this is what we actually sound like in our daily conversations, usually via like Instagram and all the other programs that we talk about. Why do I care? <sighs> we just all went on my journey with you <laughs> yeah um so you think it's gonna be inventing inventing anna i want it to be inventing anna let me just say that um i i can see it going to the white lotus but who knows, who knows? i think it's white lotus and dope sick unless they both split it and give inventing anna her mommy yeah i think it could Anna, the woman who played Anna is playing a new character, right? She's doing a... Madonna. Madonna. She's the lead act. She's going to be Madonna in the biopic Madonna. Because, you know, we all saw Elvis's biopic and we all thought, you know what? We need to do a movie about Madonna's career. Yes. So I'm going to go to Outstanding Variety Talk Series now because I'm not going sure. like, to I'm not going to give Michael the, the the energy to talk about competition until the very end here. Uh, Outstanding Variety Talk Series, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, The Late Night with uh, Seth Meyers, and The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Um, can I just say right off the bat, Emmys, as much as I've hated some of these nominees, I thank you for not nominating Jimmy Fallon for anything or James Corden for anything in this category. I appreciate the fact that you listen to the show on a regular basis and you know the hate. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break after we have some audio issues. So we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15-second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to Patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Welcome. No, no, no worries to be sorry. This is in there. This is staying in there as well. Audio issues are an important part of this ep- this show. Okay, we try to make sure that all audio is correctly identified. So we apologize for that quick commercial break. Uh, we don't usually have a lot of commercial breaks anymore, but we 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 thought we'd throw one in because Michael was having some audio issues, and I'm going to blame Michael on this one. But I'm going to go back to my original statement of outstanding variety talk series, and I was saying thank you so much, Emmys, for listening to the show of the cross border interviews with Michael Nichols Pate and Chris Brown. Because you did not nominate James Corden. I know you're going to nominate him next year for his last season. And if he wins, I'm going to scream at the top of my lungs. But also not nominating Jimmy Fallon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to us and saying, you know what? Jimmy Fallon and James Corden are overrated hats. Anyway, Michael, anything surprising in this one? No, John Oliver's going to win. I'm surprised that, uh, uh, what the hell's his name? John Stewart didn't get nominated for his Apple TV show. I didn't even know he had one. Uh, I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy. Our entertainment pundit is very up on the entertainment. There's like eight million things that are coming out and going on across the board. We, I can't be expected. We to pay know you amazing volunteer services. <laughs> I was gonna say, um, <laughs> hey. Um, I think you're right. Uh, I think the one that could potentially be, again, I always like talking about the dark horse and these things. I think Late Night with Seth Meyers is possibly a, 
underdog in this one who could be nominated. He has had a good season. He has been uh, going back to his roots at SNL with the weekend update. I think that's what's going to potentially do it for him. So that's the one I'm watching. Cool. Uh, Outstanding Variety Sketch Series. The nominees are Saturday Night Live, A Black Lady Sketch Show. End of sentence. (laughs) Black Lady Sketch Show needs to win it. Do you think it's going to? Probably not, but it needs to. Yeah. It's so funny. Have you seen it? Uh, HBO Max. We don't get HBO up here. Oh. It's fun. You can see a lot of the, they post a lot of the clips on YouTube also. Surprisingly, sometimes you can't catch things on YouTube because they're country restricted. That is horse shit. I hate, I hate the internet. The internet needs to go home. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and the last one, the last one we're going to talk about before we wrap up, because we are coming up to the 45 minute mark. And I want to make sure that we give Michael his due and just talk a little bit about what he's done for us over the last few weeks, um, is outstanding competition, uh, competition program. Michael's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Why, why did you just say that? What are you going to say about me? Anyway, um, outstanding competition program, the amazing race, Lizzo's watch out for the bigger gr- gr- grills girls there's no i in that it's yeah it's girls girls uh nailed it rupaul's drag race top chef the voice any uh odds on favorites on this one we all know rupple drag queen show is gonna win this rupple you know rupple drag queen show okay 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 jinx monsoon um, I watched the Lizzo. I watched 13 minutes of Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girls and said, No, thank you. I watched and out and I said, mm, No. <laughs> nailed it's fun. Nailed it's not like. What is nailed it? It is Nicole Byer, comedian Nicole Byer. She hosts this competition where they present like a beautiful cake, like a gorgeous cake to people who don't know how to bake. And then they have an hour and a half to two hours to recreate it. And the closest recreation of the cake that tastes the best wins. And it's hysterical. If like you want to have like a good chuckle, that's the show to watch. Okay. Uh, Top Chef. We all know Top Chef. That's pretty, it's it gets, pre- yeah. pre-annual. pre-annual. Uh, and the amazing race well it's the amazing race so let's race across america or the world and pretend that we're doing things Uh, it used to win a lot yeah survivor did too and we also have well that did well and the apprentice did as well did the apprentice win an emmy yeah that's the only thing donald trump's actually ever won huh i'm not gonna comment on that because I can't. I mentally can't right now. Um, <laughs> so the voice was. It was, was, it was with Ariana Grande, though your favorite person in that household. Who? <laughs> Ariana Grande. I don't know her. Ariana Grande. We hate her. She's Ariana trash. Grande. And, and she lost. Who won? Shelton. Think so? I'm gonna be honest. It was not a memorable season. Oh, okay. And Mr. RuPaul himself, RuPaul Charles, RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm not sure what RuPaul. season. This might be season nine thousand. I'm not hundred percent sure which season was nominated. No, they only nominate the um, main run. So this is for season fourteen. That was the last season we just the had. Right? Season that never ended. Yeah. The season that kept on going because RuPaul needed more money from advertising dollars? Money, 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 money. Can we, uh, as I just talked about a review show and we're not going to review RuPaul's Drag Race because I I would literally sit here for 12 hours yelling at the screen saying, okay, why? Grandpa yells at clouds. (laughs) Yes, that's me. That's me. 
I am the, I'm the old white guy in the neighborhood. People look at my house and go, oh, God, I had a kid who kick a ball into the backyard this week and I did not give it back to him because he kicked it into the ball into our yard and his parents have not come and gotten it since. So I have a new ball for my dogs. <laughs> Anyway, of course, parents. Anyway, <laughs> um, Michael, it's been forty-five minutes. <laughs> it sure has. It has. It's probably been forty minutes because we had a commercial break in there, and yeah. people are like, "Oh no, how long you've been?" But Michael, uh, any big shocks for this uh, Emmys this year? I don't know about any big shocks. I'm always going to die on this hill that P Valley needs to be nominated and included because I really like the show. It's on show, Showtime or Stars? Stars. It's, I enjoy it. I think it's fantastic. And then, um, yeah, I feel like that's probably it for what I wished would have gotten nominated. Oh, Evil. Why is Evil Season 2 not here? I really like Season 2 of Evil. I know you're not as much a fan of it as I was, but I just, oops. what's the? I don't want to say something inappropriate. So I'm, I'm being overly cautious when I say this. For a show that's based on demons and angels that has a shitload of money up behind it from Paramount Plus, the streaming service, I feel like I'm watching a high school production of Hamlet sometimes of how bad the set design, the CGI, the acting, the overacting, the unknown ability to pretend that something is scary when you go oh no and you're like oh no every single time mm, there's my there's my i've been fun. i found season two was a lot of fun i don't know season three we talked about i'm enjoying it but i'm not live laugh loving it but season two which would be the one that would qualify i think for this it's not wowed me or it, i mean no it did wow me and i'm shocked that it's not here yeah uh, I see where they're going with season three, but I'm like, the. I needed to move at a little bit of a quicker pace at this point. Yeah, that's the issue, right? It, I think it's slow, and I think that's why it didn't get nominated. And I think that the, C, I agree with the CGI is trash. They really should just do um, traditional effects. Like, I felt Charmed did a better job at CGI than these guys are doing. Like, the scariest parts of Evil have been George. And it's because it's a person with makeup and an outfit, like he's popping not even up and in doing it weird anymore. things. He was in this last episode. Oh, we haven't watched the last episode. Oh. But thanks. Thanks. Spoiler alerts. Well, I guess fuck your drag. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, we'll, we're watching it tonight. It's, it's our last episode we have to watch. It's uh, Sunday's episode. So we're going to watch that and then next Sunday's episode and then a few more episodes and then it's done for the season, then season four next year. Yay, season four. Uh, I'm so, I'm so shocked. At... Andrea Martin should be nominated for supporting actors. Everything. So, Everything. Like, she, she is my favorite character on this and they need to use her more often. If they get rid of Mike Coulter and put Andrea Martin in there, I'd be okay with that. I, I would be like, you know what? You know what? Father, just go away. Put Sister in. <laughs> I, or Sister just, Andrea, played by Andrea Martin. Yeah. Great <laughs> names. I think she is an underrated actor. And then you could have her up against Martin Short, and it would just be awesome because they're two SCTV alumni. I love Andrew Martin. She's one of my favorites. And she's <laughs> well, great on the show. She is. She is. As always, we always get off topic about the Emmys and we always talk longer than we should. But Michael, um, I want to let everyone know. Michael has been doing some amazing stuff for the show. He has been uh, writing some great reviews that have been going over extremely well on the show. If you want to check out his reviews of Broadway shows, 
go to our website, crossborderinterviews.ca, and under the tab where it says news, you can scroll down to his section, which is Lights of Broadway, where Michael goes to Broadway. That's right. Shocker. He goes to Broadway and he reviews the shows that he goes to. Now, this is something that he started by himself, but it has been getting a lot of traction. So we thank Michael for contributing to the show more than just this monthly or weekly or whatever uh, live video that we do, but he's doing this on his own as well. So I'm going to make the pitch, as I always do, if you want to support his work, his contribution to the show, head over to the support page. You can make a donation directly to Michael through our uh, organization. We donate, we give the money to him directly so he can go see more shows with his husband. So that way he can review more shows. So that way you can decide for yourself if you want to go see it. He is very critical of these shows. He he does not- I'm not as critical. You're not as, as am critical, but you are very, you're honest about your opinion of these shows. And you will tell the people where they fall down and where they don't. And I highly recommend, if you haven't already, head over to the crossboardentries.ca, Lights of Broadway show, and check it out because this is a in-depth analysis of some of the shows. He has some coming up. He's going to go to New York, I think, next week or the week after. Yep, He's going next to week. See- Next week, he's going to go see some more shows. We're looking forward to seeing those because then usually whenever they get to Calgary, then I can make a decision if I'm actually going to go see the show. (laughs) So in about two years time, because Hamilton is coming to Calgary and I did not get a review for Hamilton, but I'm assuming. You won't. Exactly. So with that, um, if you want, please head over to the cross board entries, support his part of the show that he donates to in the memo you can put towards likes of Broadway and all that money would go to Michael. So please do that. Highly recommend it because he has been doing a fantastic job and we could not have asked for a better contributor to the show. Because he, brings in the, he brings in the likes, he brings in the subscribers and also he brings in the views to our website. So thank you so much, Michael. Thank you. Yeah, no, if someone wants to buy my $500 Hamilton ticket to sit in the back row, sure, I'll go view. Yeah. $500 for the back row? It's rid- Hamilton's ridiculously overpriced. Yeah, it was 144 bucks for the like, like back, like the nosebleed sections in Calgary. It was like 144 for to- For the tour. Which has none of the original actors in it which has none of the originals, which does not have the original set, which does not have the original costumes, and many times is a different, completely differently directed show. So it's not the same thing you're getting that's Lin-Manuel's version of it. It's, which is fine. Tours are great. I love seeing tours. I see a lot of the tours. It's great. They come right to uh, 30 minutes down the road for me. There's a tour house. I've seen a bunch in LA when I lived there. Tours are fantastic, and I never want to discredit tours because I think it's a fantastic way to get theater out there. But I'm not paying the same money to see a tour that I want for Broadway. Yeah. Unless, like, the tour is better, because, like, I would definitely say the Phantom of the Opera tour is better than the current version that's on Broadway. It's revamped. Phantom's been there for since 88, 87, something like that. It's time for Phantom to close. The tour, they redid the tour and 10, 10 years ago, they updated it and did a whole bunch of new special effects and made it very modern with modern like special effects skills and it just flows better and it looks better. Speaking of that, speaking of that, Paradise Square, which you saw, which you reviewed, is closing this Sunday. Speaking of closing shows, are you, why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Did, I thought you were about to bring up what's in the news right now with Paradise Square. They're being sued by the Actors' Equity Union and by the Technical Union for $350,000 of back wages and benefit payments that they haven't made. Nobody has been paid on that show in like months because it's not been making back its money. The guy who produced it went to jail for defrauding Broadway in the past. And then they let him come back and do this show. It's a mess. 
I did not see that part. The only reason I knew it was closing on Sunday is because I follow someone on Instagram who is in New York this weekend. He was like, I got to see Paradise uh, Square one more time before it closes on Sunday. I was like, oh, it's closing on Sunday. That's interesting. I didn't expect that because Michael said it was it was a really good show. And he, he I know you did say that uh, there was a, a lot, lot of issues, a lot of issues, but they're like it wasn't packed in that room. They were bringing everyone down from the mezzanine down to the bottom. So that way they could fill up. If was that was that? No, extra? that was that was for colored girls, colored girls. OK, I which did it. close. Oh, did it? Oh, OK. Um, so I, I just as you can tell, read the reviews because he, I'm, I'm, Michael is usually bang on on these things. What's happening? Um, Michael, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always, always love to have you on the show to talk about things, to talk about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So with that, this has been the cross with the newly rebranded cross-border interviews with Michael Nichols paid featuring <laughs> the guest host, Chris Brown. Um, Michael, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. I'm dead. <laughs> With that, have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, get out from behind that social media page and go have a conversation with somebody. But before you do that, head over to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown and Michael Nichols Pate. Click on Lights of Broadway and re read some of his reviews because they are fan freaking tastic. Talk to you later, guys. Thank you.